How would you describe someone like John Stanley? Motoring journalist, photographer, rock music impresario, film producer, and now author of the Classic Car Yearbook 1997. We caught up with him close to his East Anglian home, looking around the legendary Downton Engineering Works near Norwich, a company that specializes in retro refurbing of classic minis. But what is, in John's opinion, a classic car anyway? Well, that's a very difficult question because realistically it's much more to do with nostalgia and your memories of cars than it really is the cars themselves. I mean, the RAC would have it 20 year old as a qualification for competition. But in truth, it's much more to do with the car that you first learned to drive or that you met your partner in. or It's all, it's all to do with memories. Now, there are so many classic car coffee table books, and yours has got a yearbook, indeed a compendium. So how different is it? Well, the yearbook is... I mean, there are other yearbooks out there, but they're just price guides, really. And that's fine if you happen to know an awful lot about cars in the first place. The book is really designed to cater for the grown-ups, for people who haven't had a spanner in their back pocket for the last couple of decades, but who are now turning back with affection towards the car that they've perhaps first owned or that they always fancied but were too busy with a career or setting a home up to be able to afford. And as a result, they now need a Bible that perhaps they can turn to. And that's a, a situation that's not being provided. The books at the moment are either coffee table celebrations of a special car, like a Ferrari or something, and they're all stock pictures. Or they're, they're actually buyer's guides, which are almost like telephone directories and don't really give you any opinion or any help. But our dads didn't always buy wonderful cars. I bet our dads bought some right old dogs. I mean, which ones are the real classics and which ones is it best to forget? <laughs> well, again, it's much more to do with your own memories because a car, you put up with cars even though they did do things wrong. I mean, a Morris Minor or a Mini, you know, some of those used to smell water and stop on, the, on, the, um, uh, on a flick of a finger. But you still cared for them. I think if you look in the price guides and lists even in your newspaper, the ones that you still see listed mean they are the ones that were cared for because they wouldn't have bothered to amend them otherwise. Now talk about your, your price guide. How did you work this one out? How reliable is it? That was very hard. Um, we thought whether we ought to get involved or not. But really if we were going to be honourable and provide a Bible as such, um, the price guides that are in the magazines, which are your only source, are very unreliable. They're very subjective. It depends if a particular car had come up in that year or that month. We found, um, for instance, there was a, a DB6 Aston Martin listed in one at £40,000 in a rival magazine for the same month, the same year, same condition, was 19000 A Mini Cooper S was seven in one and four in another. There was a Ford listed two years before it was even manufactured. Um, if you bought one magazine, you assume that's the Bible. It's not. So we got all the published price uh, for uh, cars three years ago, and then we averaged them so that we got the safest price that was conceivable. We've done the same this year. We've then been to the Bank of England and got an adjustment in the value of the pound because that too has an effect and no one bothers to do that. So they're very realistic figures. And really and truly what it's done is it's provided an opportunity to see the percentage swings. Because we've got the before and the afters, we can then, and have with the computer, evaluated. So you can look down them now and see exactly whether a car is increasing or decreasing, and it's very revealing. You know, you would expect it to be the kind of grand cars, the Porsches and the, the kind of poster cars. And in fact, that's not the case. Uh, an Audi Quattro, which was a very sophisticated and much admired classic car, has lost 32% in three years, whereas a, um, say, a Ford Popular 100e, which was a, a very basic car, has gone up 75%. An Austin 1800, which was a very mundane car, has gone up uh, 58 And this is because the large proportion of those people who are now turning towards cars are what are affectionately called the baby boomers. These are the people who... Uh, dictated music fashions in the 60s and 70s. They were behind the Rolling Stones and the Beatles. They've been behind a lot of the movement in the city with profiteering in the 80s. And they've all now reached this point where they're looking back towards their youth. They're actually hanging on to their youth to some extent. I think probably most of us are. And as a result of that, um, they're buying the cars and looking at the cars that they remember. It may have been their parents' cars, it may have been their own, it may have been the one that they didn't get. 
But these are the cars that are moving, not the, um, the exotica which the magazines tend to use in order to attract advertising. John, you live here in uh, the Norfolk area. Uh, where, where have we found you today then around town and engineering? What are they actually doing in this place? Well, I came initially to them to take a look at what they've been doing with the Mini. Um, the Mini is, as we know, one of the kind of the classics of this century. And when you do fancy a Mini, and many people do, and particularly Cooper S's, there are lots of inherent dangers with them. You know, they, they, were, they were always cars that got driven hard. Um, they've taken, apart from restorations, they've taken on the modern day Mini, and for relatively small money, they will retro style so that you have the interior, either with the original old pull handles or sliding windows or the wind up ones. They'll adjust it according to what you want, but it has all the modern engineering and technology but you can have a Mark I or a Mark II grill on it and all the bits and pieces. And that seemed to be quite a good compromise. In the book, I was not too kind to Morgan because they look gorgeous, but they actually are very antiquated. Their suspension is 1930s, and it's singularly uncomfortable. And uh, finally, talk about your stars and cars. Are these various photographs you've collected over your years and showbiz and uh, meeting all these celebrities? Well, show business is just another part of my life. Uh, um, I have had for some decades now a lot to do with public figures, I suppose. And it was really quite fun. It was sort of Susanna York and, and um, David Frost and Jimmy Savile with his bubble car. And um, it was just an insight into the, those periods. Britt Eklund was uh, her and Peter Sellers' his flat was sort of his and hers leather, leather and um, different colour seats for the men and women. And it was all perfect period stuff from the 60s. And as classic cars, is as much to do with period as it is actually to do with the cars, that uh, I think that catching those moments with the show business figures, or is it, there's another chapter in there on the toy cupboard and all to do with kind of modeling and dinkies and that, they were all part of the same mystique of, of learning about cars. If you couldn't own a G GT40, you could build a kit of it.